I think it is absolutely great that people are finally coming to their senses about wearing masks. For some reason, for a long time there, the advice was that uh, people should not wear masks unless they were sick. So, uh, to repeat that, that uh, if you were trying to protect yourself against a virus that travels through the air, enters through the nose and mouth, and attacks the, the respiratory system, you should not wear a mask to cover the place where the virus would enter. Obviously, it doesn't make any sense, but uh, sometimes when the experts say something, people assume that because somebody is an expert, they would not make a mistake. That's not true. Experts make mistakes all the time, and sometimes very dumb people get it right. So uh, you really just got to think about things and use a little common sense. Uh, there, there's a lot of advice out there right now. Some of it's good, some of it's bad. Just give it a little bit of thought. Uh, don't just believe it because somebody says it. Uh, anyway, on to the point. There are a lot of videos going around right now where people are uh, uh, giving tutorials on how to make masks. And I think it's awesome that so many people are trying to help out. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of different designs out there. I would recommend looking at the video that the Surgeon General put out, uh, I think it was just today or yesterday, pretty recently. He shows how to make a mask with no tools or sewing required. Very easy. Anybody could do it. You just need uh, some rubber bands and, uh, and some, some fabric, like an old shirt or something. Uh, it's smart design. Uh, the only thing that I think it's missing is something to, to form it around the nose because then you have a lot of air that's traveling through that area, but uh, overall it's a pretty simple design. If you don't have rubber bands or elastic because they're in short supply and you are lucky enough to live in a house where there are some women present, you might have a drawer somewhere with 17,000 or so of these. And uh, these have good elastic on them. And I bet you out of those 17,000, only about uh, two or 3,000 of them are ever worn. So give up some of those bras, cut the elastic off if you need to, if you can't find it anywhere else. And then when this is all over, somebody gets to buy some new bras. Cool. So uh, I want to talk about material selection. Not, I'm not going to give a tutorial on how to make a mask, because there are plenty of those. But um, several weeks ago, my, my sister uh, was making some masks, and then my mom was making some masks later. And I was trying to, trying to think of a way to figure out which fabric would be suitable for making a mask. Because, um, you know, different, different porosity in the fabric is going to allow bigger or smaller particles to pass through. And you also have to be able to breathe through it. Uh, so I came up with three things, three simple things to, to figure out if the fabric is suitable. And to kind of give you some uh, ideas of how you should construct the mask. So the first thing, step number one, before you consider using anything for a mask, to give it the breathing test. Hold it over your mouth, not over your mouth and nose because you got a lot of little gaps on the side, just over your mouth and take a couple of deep breaths and see how hard it is to breathe through it. Not too bad, that's potentially usable. Here's a, a finely woven fabric from a dress shirt. Very difficult to breathe through that, that's not usable. So make sure that you can breathe through it first. Now some things, uh, obviously you get like some fishnet and you could breathe through that because the holes are huge. Uh, but you got to find that kind of balance between, um, between something you can breathe through and something that's obviously not usable for filtration. So once you've done that, you know you have some different fabrics sitting around, maybe some old shirts or some towels or something that you think would be usable for the mask. The next step is to give it the light test. Hold it up to the light and uh, see how big those holes look and how, how uh, let's see if I hold this up if maybe you can see it all the light shining through there because this is a relatively inexpensive t-shirt that I cut up and, uh, and the fabric is pretty loosely woven so the holes are bigger this is more tightly woven um, so that's part of the reason why it's so easy to breathe through also cotton tends to work pretty well for that anyway uh, but that's not the only determining factor. For example, these blue shop towels are, are pretty easy to breathe through, but I can't see any light through them. So if I, if I grab a shop towel here, kind of a roll, take a few breaths. I can breathe through that pretty well, a lot better than, the, than that dress shirt, and you're not going to see any, any holes in that. So that's something to consider is maybe an additional filter you can use. So that's step number two. Step number one, 
is give it the breathing test. Step number two is to see how big the holes are because that'll help you uh, just give you a rough idea of what's going to pass through there. And then step number three, I did this with a paint sprayer because I have one and I thought it would work out well for this test. You probably don't have one of these sitting around, but uh, the idea is that I got a, uh, some pieces of white paper and this piece of wood with some holes cut in it. Um, it doesn't have to be this, I just use this for the test. And I uh, put the paper down, put this piece of paper over there, put a piece of fabric over the top of that, and then I put this top of an apple juice container there, put my paint gun on, paint gun on there, and uh, give the trigger a quick squeeze and then see what passes through. And when I did it without the fabric on there as the first test, that's what it looked like. So the, 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 the dye, it's um, just some water with some black dye, shoots through or sh shoots directly onto the paper and dyes it black. And if I uh, put different fabrics on there and squeeze the trigger, you know, it comes out with a little force like a cough or a sneeze it would push some stuff through that, that paper. So that was you know, a pretty, pretty simple test, not extremely scientific um, as far as the equipment goes, not very advanced equipment, but just gives you a rough idea of what will pass through fabric and what won't. So I'm not gonna go through every different type of fabric I used. I, I, I tried polypropylene cotton, a couple different types of cotton and some blends, polyester, uh, shop towels, and, um, and, and it seemed like, well, I'm not going to say which fabrics were, were better than others. Do your own test and make your own determination based on what you have in the house. Uh, since you don't have the paint equipment, if you have a spray bottle, you could try that as well. But um, I will just say that uh, if, you do, if you do the breathing test and the light test, the light test will already tell you how much is going to pass through. Because that's kind of commonsensical at that point. If the holes are bigger, more stuff would pass through. So, uh, if you, so I'm actually going to backtrack on what I said and say this is a two-step process. You don't have to do step three because I did that and confirmed the obvious common sense thing that bigger holes will allow more stuff to pass through. Now, what I, I did want to test also when it, uh, with, with the gun is um, if you look at the Surgeon General's video that, that he put up on how to make a mask, his process involves folding the mask over several times. So you end up with four layers of fabric at the end. Now I think about, you know, look through the space in between my fingers, right, because the, the holes are, are, are lined up. If you fold the fabric over multiple times, then there's going to be a little bit of a baffle that any airborne particles would have to travel through. So just by folding the mask over, now this inexpensive cotton uh, that would catch some particles becomes much better. And if you fold it over again, so you have four layers of fabric. I can still breathe through that because of the size of the holes, but uh, as, as particles, moisture particles navigate through there, hopefully, I think that's the idea, hopefully more of those particles will get stuck on the fabric and not make it into your respiratory system, your mouth or your nose. So um, I'll just show real quick some of the outputs. Uh, in fact, I could just do this test again because it's so easy. Uh, what I'm gonna do here with this piece of black fabric is over the top hole, I'm going to leave it single thickness, and then over the bottom hole, I'm going to fold it over so it's double thickness. And I got a, got a nice clean piece of paper here, and I'm going to turn on the gun and do a quick shot of each. twice and the fabric's wet in both places but now if I pull off this uh, piece of wood and get down to the actual paper this is what we're looking at so I think that says it all right there through the first fabric uh, there are the single layer of cotton all these little black particles got through and uh, and contaminated the paper and on the second one I really can't see much of anything here. 
Uh, it doesn't mean it's going to 100% block coronavirus, but that means that as far as moisture particles flying through the air at high speed, this is going to do a lot better than that. So um, as you're making your mask, make sure that it is minimally double layered. Four layers, the way the Surgeon General shows on his video, is the best way to go, and, and this is why. So once again, picking out your materials first, make sure that you can breathe through it, because that lets you know if it's even usable in the first place. Second, hold it up to the light, because the size of the holes let you know um, how critical it is to fold that over multiple times. And, um, and then uh, get to work making it, and preferably, if you can put a piece of metal or something, like a, you can cut a piece out of an aluminum can, or maybe fold up some aluminum foil, or uh, could even use a paper clip or something just to, to fold over your nose, and fold that into your fabric so it actually uh, fits a little tighter to your face, that is even better still. Uh, so those are, those are some options. I mean, there are a million ways you could do it. You could even use a, an apple juice container. Don't ask me what I'm working on here. And make that fit your face pretty well. Isn't that wild? So a lot of things you can do if you get creative with all the different uh, things that you have in your house. So I hope this was of some help in, in feeling confident about your selection and mask material. And uh, best of luck. Hopefully if you figure out something that really works, that you can maybe post a, a video or some pictures as well.